Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to go ahead and build a computer. I have my computer case that I just uh, did an unboxing video of, and I have my micro ATX motherboard, then I have my power supply, my RAM, my SSD, and everything's ready. You'll notice I don't have a GPU. So I'm going to see how the onboard video does on this thing versus having my own GPU. If it doesn't, then I will repurpose my current GPU that I have. So all in all, um, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the stuff that I have. So first thing first is the motherboard and the CPU. The micro ATX, you know, got the cable, got my user guide. This motherboard belonged to my brother-in-law and we are repurposing it. The CPU is already in it. I'll pull this thing straight out. The CPU that's in here, it's a Pentium G258. It, it, it's a dual core CPU and you know, it should serve my purpose just fine. Again, it's not meant to be a gaming machine where I'm playing AAA games. I just want to build a budget PC that will run, you know, what I want it to run, which is PS Now. And I don't want to get a PlayStation because pretty soon PlayStation will become obsolete, just like my old PS3. All right, that's enough with the motherboard. I picked up a pair of um, G-Scale Ribjaw. These are DDR3 1600. Uh, they're like 40 bucks. Then I have my SSD and I went for the Samsung Evo 860, a 250 gig. I don't need a whole lot of space in this thing either. If I do need to add additional storage in this thing, I have um, other hard drives on my other PC that I can just stick it in there uh, if I need to. But this should be just fine. Then we have the power supply. It's an EVGA 500BR. Let's go ahead and open this thing up. It's just a simple power supply. It's not a modular or anything. I don't care about that. Instruction manual, and there you go, the box is empty. The reason I went with EVGA because I, uh, again, I know the quality and I need something that'll last. Yeah, pretty straightforward. All right, and there you have it. That's everything laid out. I'm gonna go ahead and position the camera differently so you guys can see what I'm doing and what I'm working on. All right, so now that we had a chance to take a look at all the things that we're gonna use for the build, uh, I just took everything out of the box and I'm putting it down on my table just so I know exactly what I'm going to use and when I'm going to use it. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and remove that heatsink, the old one, and I'm going to put some new thermal paste in there. Um, ooh, that reminds me, I also need a credit card. It's a card, it's a plastic card. The whole purpose is I want to use it to spread the thermal paste on the CPU, and an old Starbucks card will do just fine. Let's go and remove this heatsink and see what's underneath that. Uh, th these are flat, so I'm just going to twist them, and that should come loose. So it doesn't snap or anything. You kind of just want to turn it to the direction it says open. That's it. And you can just pull them up like so. And that should come right off. Little pins in the back. You kind of just kind of squeeze them out. That's it. This is the old heat sink. Just a little tissue will do. Oh, that's dry. So a lot of times what happens is uh, with thermal paste, when you have it in there for a long time, uh, especially if it's the one from factory, they tend to dry up like after a few years. And there you go, that comes up. I'm gonna wipe off the dust. I don't need to do anything else with it. It's pretty clean. Let's go ahead and take a look at the motherboard. Let's clean that out and we'll put some new one in. Again, my tissue, I'm just gonna wipe that off. Okay, let's take a little Q-tip. There's this little Q-tip I'm just going to run across it. So let's continue cleaning this up. I probably don't even need the rubbing alcohol. I think uh, we're good to go. But you know what? Just for my peace of mind, I am going to use the rubbing alcohol. I'm just putting on my Q-tip. I want to make sure that I don't drip it on anywhere else. Just enough. That's it. And I'm just going to wipe it off. Just going to let it air dry. Yeah. That's good. And then same with this. Uh, I'm just gonna use around it, and voila! Look how clean that thing is. You can eat off of that. So we're gonna put this thing back in, you know, just the way it was. Okay, there you go. That's in. Nice. Now that we have the fan and uh, you know reset and it's all clean and everything, my CPU is clean. Let's go ahead and apply some new thermal paste. And I'm going to use the CryoRig CP7. Then let's go ahead and take our thing and I'm just going to put a little bit. Okay. I put a very little amount. That's it. 
I think that, that should do the trick. And just spread it around, you know. And then I'm going to take my card. I'm just going to smear this thing across. I'll leave it at that. The rest, I'm just going to smudge it off on this. Yeah, that's it. That's all it. This should be good to go. So, let's see if I can do it with one hand. You put it, you just want to align everything together and then we'll push it in. Okay, now that we have the heat sink in place, it's time to just snap it back in. So earlier I pushed these things, the little knobs in the open position. Now I'm just gonna turn them into my close position just to have them get ready because that way I can push and snap it in. And you just do one by one. So this one, and as soon as you do, as soon as you press, this little thing will start, you know, coming up on the motherboard on the other side. So that's how you know, I know it's in place. And so there's, there, there are your clicks. So that's just the first click and there's another one. And there you go. That's secured in place. And you'll notice on the back, this little knobs, you know, they're nicely secured. That's it. It's that easy and it's that simple. Now that we have the motherboard ready, um, let's do a few more things. So just lay it flat on your desk. You have your slots open. Mind your pin where they are. And in they go. Now once you close them, you're, you'll hear clicks and you wanna hear those clicks to make sure you have a secured, uh, it, it's secured in place. So click number one, which is this side, and click number two which is on this side. Same thing here. When you're done with all that, just clean up your workstation. All right, let's go ahead and switch over to the PC and we'll start shoving everything in. All right, so first thing first, just remove your side panel and just save the screws somewhere where you'll find it easily. Let's go and take a look inside. Everything is in place. I mean, um, and you have the mounting points for the motherboard. Uh, where the motherboards will sit, you have your cables. Um, so you kind of wanna, just want to push everything aside so you have a clean area to work on. And that's one side of it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other side. Okay, that's that. So first thing first, let's go ahead and install this uh, PSU. It does have a fan with it, so the fan's going to point downward. And. Put it like so. PSU is in there. You just need to find the screws to screw them in. All right, just need four. That's it. And four we have. Just line it up with uh, the proper, uh, you know, where, where, where the screws are gonna go. And once you have them, once you have it in place, grab your screws and screw the first one in. And once the first one kicks in, I mean, it'll line up nicely with the rest of it. One of the things that I always like doing is I like to hand tighten all my components just so I know and I can feel them to know how tightly or how tight I'm making them. You don't need to over tighten them at all. It kind of just sits there. The whole purpose is it just needs to be in, in this place. That's it. It's not going anywhere. So I recommend you hand tighten if you can. And the last one. Out of all the screws you want to fit, there's always one that doesn't want to go in. Like it hates its life or something. Okay, we're good to go. PSU is nicely secured in place. Make sure your PSU is off. Ready for the SSD. Um, all right, this one's good. Have my SSD cable. I'm just gonna leave it inside. It's not gonna go anywhere. I mean, it's gonna sit in one place anyways. I'm just gonna feed it from the inside. Connect it, doesn't matter which one, just connect one of them. Just gonna leave the cable sticking out this way because I know the SATA cable is on this side. Now, let's go ahead and connect the fan to the Molex. So that's one fan connected. 
another fan connected. That's it. I guess this is where the zip tie will come in handy. Yeah, let's go ahead and use one. Zip tie, zip tie is good to go. Okay, that's it. Cable's in. Now I just have the motherboard cable out. Fans are in, everything's good. Mm, yeah, we are fine. Now to install the motherboard. These are really thin aluminum, you know, face plates. Be careful not to cut yourself along the edges. They're very sharp. These will go inside out. So you kind of stick them in here and you push them out. And once you securely fasten them, uh, you'll hear a couple of snaps. That's it. Just push them from each of the corners and you're done. So the motherboard has uh, several mounting points. Uh, make sure you know where they are before you put them in. So one other thing I want to point out, which is an amateur mistake. Can't believe I did this after so many motherboards. This is not the CPU fan. The CPU fan is actually up out here. And it says CPU fan. Like, I can't believe I missed that. That's just amateur mistake. Okay, we're good to go. Now let's go down and secure it in place. Where's my screwdriver? I always like to do the one on the outsides first, or you can do the insides first, whichever one, doesn't really matter, but that's my personal preference. I like the screwdriver that came with the case. This thing is slightly magnetic, and the tip is slightly magnetic, so, helps hold the screw in place. All right, just give it one last tug to make sure everything is nicely secured. Now that I have a motherboard installed, our PSU installed, all of our cables are tied together. So now we can go ahead and connect the power connector for the motherboard. They left some holes. The case has some holes in it to help you do some cable management. So kind of like that. Now, uh, let's work on the on this side. Okay, now that we have everything in place, let's go ahead and hook up the rest of the connectors uh, in place. Um, I have my USB 3.0, which goes here. Just be careful with this. In the past, there's been many times where I messed up the pins, trying to j jam something in. Let's do USB 1. Oh, there's another USB. And then you have the HD audio. And on this motherboard, it's labeled F audio or front audio. So we're gonna hook it up like so. And that's it. And we have these little guys. And all that is gonna go here, this little area. So we're gonna go ahead and do them one by one. Okay, that's it. That's everything in place. And we're ready. The side panel. Okay, and that, my friend, is how you build a computer. It's very easy. Follow, the, follow your instructions. Um, just keep track of all your components, whatever you're using, and we're in business.